Blog Talk Radio.
probably reschedule this for a better day, maybe do do this on do this on Friday, or maybe we talk about this on Sunday because this is a perfect opportunity to get some issues out that affect us in the black community as well. So let's just put a little bit more music on and see what what happens. <laughs>
the rhyme will be kicking in. Till I hit my last note, my mind remains fine. All kind of ideas, self-esteem, make it seem like the thought took years to build. But still say a rhyme after the next one. Prepared, never scared, I'll just bless one. And you know that I'm the solo whistle. So Eric B, make a clap to this. Make, 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 make a clap to this. Make, 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 make a clap to this. I don't gotta feel, don't be acting ill No tricks in 86, it's time to build Very easy on the cut, no mistakes allowed Cuts to me, MC, me move the crowd I made it easy to dance with this But can you detect what's coming next From the flex of the lips Say indeed then I would see Cause my man made a mix Every lead he won't be no band aid You're fake, you think of this So I'm honest, too, there's no rhymes left I hurry up and cut the cut or make a bleed to death But he's kicking it, plus it ain't no half stepping The party is live, the rhyme can't be kept inside of me like a volcano, it ain't the everyday style of the same old rhyme, cause I'm better than the rest of them, every beat is on the cut, and my name is Rock Band, make me make a make a clap to this, make me make a make a clap to this, make me make a make a clap to this, make me make a make a clap to this, make me make a make a clap, make a clap to this. Me, is that- 
that right mix master I B E. Because we're urban souls. 
and it's an urban site, although we have we don't discriminate and we don't we, anybody can come and join Urban Souls regardless of the color of your skin or the content of your character. You can join UrbanSouls.com, but understand that there are some real issues that need to be discussed amongst our very own people, you know, and talk and not talking about it obviously isn't making things any better, you know. And it made me feel like part of me felt like you know. Sometimes we try to sweep issues under the rug because we want to embrace everybody. But the one thing that, you know, I was soul searching and the one thing that I realized in this lifetime, we have to be about our own people. You know, you can embrace everybody and you can embrace every culture, but you really have to get to the meat of the fabric and find out what it is that's stopping us as African Americans, us as people of color, not just black, but people of color. I'm talking about Hispanics. I'm talking about Indians. I'm talking about Asians. People of color, well, not so much as Asians because, you know, they got it wrapped up, but we're going to talk about that later. The thing of it is this. We don't have it together. And what made me decide to sit and talk about this was the fact that I was watching this this uh, uh, discovery thing on TV, and the 85% of the jails were filled with young black men. 85% of the jails, you know, they were saying how, oh, my cousin is here, and, and they were and they were enlightened by it, they were embraced by it, they were like, yay, my cousin is in here, oh, my daddy's on the third on the third level, and my uncle Bob is on the third. It does not make sense that you are so happy that you have family in jail. The, what, what kind of sense does that make? You know, so somewhere, I said to myself, somewhere down the line, when is this going to actually be a problem? You know, when, when is this problem going to end? When is the issue going to stop? We always talk about how issues never change, but if you don't talk about an issue, there is not going to be a solution. If you don't put your heads together, there's not going to be a solution. If you don't put your two cents in, there is not going to be a solution. And the problem with us as African Americans is that we put our two cents in where it does not actually belong, meaning we are quick to go buy from the Korean store when the black store has had to close down for no business. We are quick to buy from other nations when our own neighborhoods are suffering. And it's not just a, a, a southern issue or, or a midwestern issue. It's all around the country where black folks don't have it together. And the one post on, on uh, Urban Souls that really, really caught my eye today was one that that girl Benz put up. And she put up the post by 12 Things the Negro Must Do. And I'm not sure if any of you know who Nanny Helen Burroughs was, but Nanny Helen Burroughs, she was born in the 1800s. And she was born in the 1800s, and she died back in the 60s. She was, she was the meat of this fabric, of, of this book. You know, and she said, these are the things that we need to know and why we can't get ahead. And it caught my attention because it made me realize that, you know what, we have been on the same road for so long till this woman was born in the 1800s and died in the 60s. You know, and, and, and it still is a topic of conversation. Obviously, we haven't got it right. Obviously, we have not got it together because we are still sitting in the same pot from then until now. And one of the things that she said, one of the 12 things that a Negro must do for himself, she said the Negro must learn to put things first, to put first things first. The first things are education, development of character traits, a trade, and home ownership. She said in this book, and I quote, the Negro puts too much of his earnings in clothes, in food, in show, and in having what he calls a good time. The Negro buys what he wants and begs for what he needs. You know what? Y'all can say all day long that's not true, but y'all know it's true. You know it's true. You can see someone all day long, and I'm going to put it on a level of where all of my listeners can get a better understanding. I had a girl walk up to me 
and they were talking about purses. So this girl walks up to me, and she says, yeah, because I paid $1,700 for this Louis Vuitton book sack. What is the purpose of you spending that kind of money on a Louis Vuitton bag, but you don't have a dime to put in it? What sense does that make for you to sit up and have a bag that costs you almost $2,000, and you got the nerve and the gall to be working at Walmart? You would think that if you put your money into something that was tangible and save your money into something that you can touch, feel, and hear all the, the days of your life, you wouldn't be sitting up here working at Walmart. Walmart, you would have a stock in Walmart. And this is what us as black and African Americans don't understand. You putting too much into what these white folks have to offer. Gucci run up and you go run and get it. Louis Vuitton run up and you go run and get it. Moschino, run up and you go run and get it. What is the purpose of you having a pair of $400 jeans, a pair of $400 jeans, but you don't have a dime to put in your wallet? You know, it's one thing if you are successful. You know, and I know some of y'all, I'm, I'm going to hit some toes. I'm going to stump on some toes right about now. But you know how y'all know me. I love you and I really don't care. But it's one thing if you're going to have something to put inside your wallet after you have purchased something that large. You know, but it's another thing if you're scraping up from, 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 from pillar to post, you can barely pay your rent and the light's about to get turned off, but you didn't turned around and you didn't bought a bag that cost you $1,700. What sense does that make? And we don't see that it makes absolutely no sense at all. You can argue till the, till the cows come home, and they will argue with you right back and tell you that you're wrong. This little girl argued with me for, for 45 minutes the other day because I said to her, you working at Walmart and you got a part-time job at Burger King. But you have just had the nerve to tell me that you just spent that kind of money on somebody who don't even come visit your neighborhood somebody that don't even put stock in your neighborhood, somebody who could care less whether you're living in the ghetto or not. He got his. Now you need to get yours. We need to pull together and put our money together because if we do, we will be the strongest race in the entire world. This, what I'm saying, does not make sense. Now don't get me wrong, people. If you got it, you got it. I'm glad for you. If you can afford to spend that kind of money on a purse, you got it, I'm happy for you. If you can afford to spend that kind of money on a pair of pants or a pair of shoes, if you got it, I'm happy for you. But if you got a little penny any paycheck and you want to go to try to spend an arm and a leg on something that makes absolutely no sense, then something is wrong with you. There's really something wrong, and we need to go back to the drawing board and figure out why you're doing the things that you're doing. Now, the second thing that Nanny Burrow said was, the Negro must stop expecting God and white folk to do for him what he can do for himself. She says, it is the divine plan that the strong shall help the weak, but even God does not do for man, who man what man can do for himself. The Negro will have to do exactly what Jesus told the man in John 5 and 8. He says, to do carry his own load, take up your bed, and walk. It's in the Bible. It's right there, plain and simple, black and white people. Stop expecting white folks that, that, like, like they owe you something. White folks don't owe you nothing. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to hear a bunch of y'all come out here and say, I'm going to get a bunch of emails. I already know it. I'm going to hear a bunch of y'all say, well, you know, because they owe me my 40, my 40 acres and a mule. You know how long ago that was and you still you, you still suffering? How long are you going to sit on your 40 acre and a mule woe is me seat? How long is that going to happen? How long are you going to continue to say I'm unemployed or I'm ignorant because of what white people have done to my, my ancestors? Your ancestors are not knocking on your door saying go get them. Go get our 40 acres and a mule. Go get it. Because if they were, you'd have your 40 acres and a mule. You understand what I'm saying? If they were knocking on your door, you would already have your 40 acres and a mule. So don't come back hollering about you doing something for your people because you're not. You sitting on your front porch waving at Uncle Jesse as he's passing down the street 
and his souped out 20, 20 uh, inch rims waving down and, and waving at people, you ain't helping nobody. Let's just call a spade a spade today. You need to get up off that front porch and go find you a job. And if you can't find a job, I was watching CNN the other night. And they were saying, yeah, because the recession is so bad that I can't find a job. The recession is so bad that I can't put food on the table. And they about to cut off my unemployment. Let me back up and tell you all something. You see, after Hurricane Katrina, they was giving out all them checks. You cannot imagine the purchases that was going on. Now, let me just tell you how people do. Let me tell you how we do, black people. You done just had a 15-foot wall of water hit your house. You, Everything you own is gone. Even Everything you ever thought you had is gone. The house that you used to lay your head on is gone. Everything that you know to this day is gone. That wall of water came and took everything you had, including some of your family's lives. But what you did when you got that first $2,000 check was this. You went on down to Macy's and got you a Louis Vuitton. But you don't have a bed to lay your head in. This is what I'm talking about. We got to do a little bit better than what we're doing. You're going to put yourself, oh, I'm going to go get that Louis because it's on sale. It's right now. They got it. Macy's got it on clearance for $400. But you don't have a house to sleep in. You staying at Motel 6. You staying at Motel 6. And you're getting fed by the government. They're giving you money to rebuild your lives. See, let me tell you something. That first check was supposed to be for food and clothing. That first $2,000 we got was for clothing and for food. How many people did I see run into Macy's or these high-priced stores to grab a pair of Nikes? You don't have a place to sleep, but you go and grab a pair of Nikes. Why don't you take you and your children down to pay less and put something on your feet to keep you and sustain you until you can do better? This is what I'm talking about. Then we as African Americans have the nerve to say they need to give us more money. Well, it's been four years. How much money do you want us to want to give you? It's been almost four years. Yes, I'm not going to lie and say people are still suffering because people are still suffering. And they're suffering at the hands of others. Yes, they are. But the percentage of people are suffering because they don't know how to get up out of it. They don't know how to seek help. They don't know how to ask themselves, how can I help myself? But instead, they'd rather sit on that Internet and look up under government funding, food stamps, welfare. How can I get this free and how can I get that free? If you don't help yourself, how do you expect for God to help you? How? God walked the earth. How do you expect for him in his in his divine plan to help you? You got to dig yourself out that ditch, my brother and my sister. You got to do it for yourself. You see, another thing. She said the the Negro must keep himself, his children, and his home clean and make the surroundings in which he lives comfortable and attractive. He must learn to run his community up, not down. He can segregate by law. We integ- we integ- sorry, we integrate only by living. Civilization is not a matter of race; it is a matter of standards. Believe it or not, someday some race is going to outdo the white man completely. It can be the black race if the black people get sense enough. Civilization goes up and down that way. Y'all tell me that's not a true statement. Tell me it's not a true statement. Now, I know I'm going to get somebody to say, well, you know, white people got raggedy houses too, and white people don't keep their lawn too. I'm not talking about white people today. I'm talking about us. I'm talking about how a neighborhood goes down as soon as the first black person gets in it. You know it's true. You know it is true. You may not want to understand it, and you may not want to say it, but you know what? It is true. The first time you have somebody black coming to a very good neighborhood, why you got five, six cars sitting on the grass? Why you, I, I've seen it for myself. I have seen it for myself. This is a little city in New Orleans called Metairie. Metairie was a very nice place to be before Hurricane Katrina. It was, you know, middle class people and, and upper class people. It was even some poor people in Metairie. 
But this is what happened. Let me tell you what happened after Hurricane Katrina. You see all the Mexicans that came over from Honduras and, and, and Mexico and in Nicaragua and all those places where they come, they, they're called hurricane chasers. And they come to where hurricanes hit and they help to clean up and they help to refurbish the city. Well, this is the problem. First of all, you ain't got no green card. Second of all, you done brought you, your grandmama, your mama, your cousins, your family, all y'all done come over here. Now y'all need somewhere to live. Now you got a whole neighborhood full of people who don't even speak English, and they expect for us to learn their language. Nobody, not going to happen. You come to America, you're going to need to speak my language. So now you got the Mexicans and the black folks that moved in from the Ninth Ward over from New Orleans because there's nothing else left over there. Now you got them that moved on over into little old Metairie. Now, they done took all the white folks, they done moved them clean out. The white folks like, oh, no, oh, no, 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 can't build. Not because they black. Don't get the story wrong, family. It wasn't because they were black that they couldn't deal. It was because of the character of people who moved into their city. It had nothing to do with them being black. It had nothing to do with them being Mexican. Would you want somebody to tear down your neighborhood after you done spent a hundred and fifty, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars on your home and now you open your front door and you got five old nineteen seventy seven cars, none of them running, and somebody always outside playing music trying to get the cars fixed. Would you like that after you have spent so much money? keeping your lawn clean and keeping your house up to date and keeping your neighborhood fresh. And here you come, standing there with your little sagging jeans. I'm going to tell it like it is. Now you got you and your homeboys. None of y'all got a job. Where y'all getting these cars from? I have no clue. None of the cars are running. Can't none of y'all afford to get the cars fixed. But every time the people come and say, look, this is, um, you know, you got to move your car. Because, you know, this is illegal. You can't have the cars that's not running. It's just sitting here. They, they, you're either going to get them running or you're going to get them towed away. That's the way it goes. Okay. Every time they come, they got another excuse. They know little Juju, who is the, the, the repair man around the corner, he going to give them a fake note and say, oh, it's in the process of being repaired. This is what I'm talking about. Keep your own neighborhoods straight and clean. There's no reason that we as African Americans have to be so trifling. I call a spade a spade. It's some trifling, trifling, trifling brothers and sisters out there. It don't make no sense. You got to come outside. You can hear the music popping against your walls. Someplace you paying rent and mortgage. It makes no sense at all. You know, and, and, and the sad part about this whole thing is the fact that this subject has been talked about since the 18, early 1900s, and it still hasn't gotten any better. Number four, the Negro must learn to dress more appropriately for work and for leisure. Knowing what to wear, how to wear it, when to wear it, and where to wear it are earmarks of common sense culture and also an index to character. I'm going to repeat that because it might be somebody sitting around here with their little foo-foo go-go pants on right now. Knowing what to wear, how to wear it, when to wear it, and where to wear it are earmarks of common sense. Common sense. Common sense. Does it make any sense for you to go into your office with a shirt on so tight that your buttons are popping open? Does it make any common sense to walk into an office and say you're looking for a job and you got half your breath hanging out? Does it make any sense for you to go into your company where you work, I don't care if you're a secretary or if you're cleaning the floors, and you got 75 tattoos all over your body? You got a tattoo on your neck. You got a tattoo behind your ear. You got a tattoo on your arm. You got a tattoo on your wrist. You got a tattoo on your face. You got a you got a piercing on your lip. You got a piercing on your nose. You got a piercing on your eyebrow. Come on, people. Do you really think that somebody's going to take you seriously? Do you think somebody's going to really say to you, oh, you got the job? 
No, they're not. They're going to look at you and smile on your face and say, you know what? You know what? I'm going to take a look at your application, and I'm going to um see you, and we're going to call you. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to call you. And then you sitting around your house popping your bubble gum, kick a pop, kick a pop, kick a pop. I wonder why they ain't called me. Well, maybe it was that too small shirt you had on, sister, and maybe it was that too little skirt you had on, my sister, not to mention that big-ass tattoo you had slapped on the side of your leg, sister. Maybe that's what it was. But you always want to say self. It's, it's, it's one thing to, 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 to want to do something for yourself. You know, it's a, and, and people quickly say, you know what, that's my constitutional right. That constitutionally, I can do what I want to do. I can say what I want to say. You sure can. You sure can. It is your right to say what you want to say and look how you want to look. But one thing you need to understand is in the workforce, you got to play by the rules. You don't have to go into the workforce looking a mess. Prime example, I said to my daughter, I said, I want you to take a look at who are the doctors, who's in the emergency room. You know, we were in the emergency room. My, My niece's best friend had a baby, and she had the baby early. The baby weighed two pounds, but she's alive and well. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. The baby's alive and well, and he's doing good. He just has to be four pounds to six pounds before he can get out of the hospital. Okay, so we're in the emergency room, and I said to my daughter, I said, I want you to take a good look. I want you to take a good look at the doctors. I want you to take a good look at the nurses. I want you to take a good look at the LPNs. I want you to take a good look at the techs. Then I want you to take a good look at the people who clean the walls, cleaning the windows, cleaning the bathrooms, sweeping the floors, and cleaning the vomit. This is what I want you to take a good look at. But I don't want you to take a good look at them because they're black. I want you to take a good look at them because I want you to concentrate on their character. I want you to concentrate on their behavior. This is what I want you to concentrate on. So we sit there. And the, der- the nurses that come out that are black, oh, hello, good morning, how are you? Oh, that's nice. And how is so-and-so? That's a, that's a nice. Okay, now, I want you to take a good look at the cleaning people. Oh, they're so loud you can hear them around the corner. They're talking about stuff that no, you have no business talking about. They're talking about people. They're talking about the, the patients that come through. They're loud. They got them big old five feet tall hair dudes that swirl up and the, and the hair glued to the side of their face. They got them gold teeth sitting in their mouth. They got the, it's a mess. It's a mess. It is a mess. And it's sad. And sometimes it breaks my heart because they just don't get it. How are you to train people who weren't trained? How are you to tell someone, you know, the reason why you're cleaning floors is because you've got a set of gold teeth sitting in your mouth, you're popping gum, and your hair is five feet tall with about 16 pounds of hairspray, and you can't speak proper English. So, therefore, you're going to always be in that area of expertise, toilet cleaners. Don't get me wrong, family. There's nothing wrong with cleaning toilets. There's nothing wrong with cleaning toilets if that's what you choose to do for a living. But don't blame the white people because you can't get out that department. Don't blame the white people because you can't do it. Don't blame God because it's not happened. Blame yourself. Take a good look at yourself in the mirror and say, well, you know what, maybe it's because I got these gold teeth. Maybe because I got a tongue piercing. Maybe because I got this big old bone sticking through my nose. Maybe that's what it is. You're in America. And this is what bothers me about Africans living in America. You always want to go back to Africa. You always, I'm going to take it to Africa because in Africa they wore a bamboo shoot up their nose. Out in Africa they wore this, this, this. You don't know nothing about African culture, partner, because guess what? Africans were the proudest people in the world. We were kings and queens in Africa. We were kings and queens. We stood tall with our heads held up high until the slave men come and take us away. It didn't degrade nobody. But you start degrading yourself. It's that crab in the bucket mentality that I'm always talking about. You need to understand one thing. If you're trying to get ahead, education is predominantly free. Let me tell you all something else. I sat and talked to this little girl, and I said, you know what? Just because you had a baby don't mean that you can't finish your education. Just because you had a baby don't mean that you got to stop going to school. Well, my mama said it ain't no no place for me to go in school other than, you know, be, to be like a LPN. No, don't tell your children that they can't be anything because they've had a child. 
You want to tell your children you need to be more than that because you need to be able to take care of your child. You need to get off of welfare and food stamps. But see, you got their mothers who wasn't taught because their mothers wasn't taught to keep them children on welfare and food stamps because everybody's going to get fed. It's a shame. It's a shame. It is a shame, and it don't make any sense. We as African Americans got to do better. If we don't do better, we're going to be a dying race. We we are 80% of the country. People of color should be running things. It didn't change nothing that Barack Obama is president of the United States of America. You still got suckers running around here with their pants hanging on the ground and their big old dirty dreadlocks. Have you ever stopped and asked a young person, why are you locking your hair? They can't tell you what it means. They can't tell you what it means, but they can say to you, oh, you know, because, uh, you know, it, it, it's tight. You know, it look good. You know, I like the way it look and things. You heard me? Enough said. Enough said. It's awful. It is awful. And we need to understand one thing, that welfare was not bought for us. And, yeah, I know. I'm, I know what you're going to say. A lot of white folks is on welfare. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. But, like I said, we're talking about us as African Americans. We got to do better. Number five, the Negro must make his religion an everyday practice and not just a Sunday go-to-meeting emotional affair. Uh-huh. Y'all know what I'm about to say. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm about to say. We are very quick. When I say quick, we are very quick to jump in church on Sunday. You got to go run way to the mall and get you a Sunday go to meet in polyester dress with a big old brim hat to run to church on Sunday. Some of us don't go to church except on Easter Sunday. And then you're going to go spend $400 on an outfit for the entire family to go sit up in church, and you can't even find what it is in the Bible. He said, turn to Matthew and to it, and you're doing this here. All in church. you just flipping them. Then you're going to stand up because you ain't found it yet, but you're too embarrassed to know you ain't found it in the book. And you're going to stand up with looking at stuff that ain't got nothing to do with what he's talking about. And they're going to holler about some amen. <laughs> Don't get me started. you got to stop it. Enough is enough. Hey, we got a call, the area code 909. You're on the air. Peace and blessings, my brother, from another mother. Peace and blessings, my brother. How you doing, Dan? Oh, man, I'm doing all right. You know, I had to get some stuff out there today. You know, I said, you know what? We have a, a show on Sunday. We got our Friday show. I said, I'm going to change it to some real talk. I hear that. There's nothing wrong with that, my brother. You know, like you said, things that make you go, hmm, and things that make you want to think, you know? We got to start thinking, my brother. We got to start thinking about us, you know? I said, man, I came home. I ran home. I said, wow. I said, you know what? Let me just run up in here and do this show. Because I was going to cancel it. Then I said, you know what? This show, this, these are some things that needs to be talked, that needs to be said and need to be talked about. Because, as, again, we as African Americans are quick to want to sweep stuff up under the rug when it's uncomfortable to us. True that, true that. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a re-education. And, you know, we, we must do this because for, for the sake of our uh, next generation, our, our new generation, the youngins, man, you know, they have to have a base, a basis to start from, you know, and to continue to be, the great uh, nation that we are, you know? That's right. That's right. You know, and I tell people all the time, you know, I, I have known the Quam family. We have known each other for well over a decade, and it doesn't matter, and I, and I said at the beginning of the show, it doesn't matter what the person is black, whether the person is black or white, it's the person's character that we have in question, and we have to get our own people on the right track. That's true. That's true. It is the, it is the contents of your character. Um, you know, Martin Luther King said that a long time ago, you know, that this day will come where man will be judged not by the color of his skin but the contents of his character. Exactly. And we have to bring that forth. Um, uh, we have to continue to bring that forth because, you know, we, we, we got a little setback in the, in the 80s and then the 90s came a new, new breed. And, you know, we got to get back to the basics. You got – we have to, you know, it's each one teach one, and that's why you and I and, and people like uh, uh, Bianca Fly out there and, 
and Dante and others are trying to re-educate ourselves as well as the next generation. That's right. That's right. We, need to, we need to continue to, you know, do the program uh, because the program is running way ahead of us. And you can't sit, you can't sit back and, and, and put your hand out and say, I need this, give me this, you owe me this. Uh, that's no more, you know. Uh, we, you know, as far as the welfare system that we're talking about, it was invented in the 50s to help people in need. That's right. Not to that's stay right. money, not to stay on and breed and make children, you know, and, and then you get the children's children get to go on welfare and so on and so forth. It was some. It was a type of program for need, but then that that program uh, just got overrated and, and it overblowed. And you know we don't, you know, and and that's that's what that's one of our basic problems. Another one is education and spirituality is the key to any nation. That's if right. you don't have your morals and you don't have your education, you cannot do anything in a moving world. That's right. Okay. This world's constantly moving. You got to be up on it. You know, everybody right. can't be a rapper. Everybody can't be a rapper. Everybody can't be a basketball player. There you go. There you go. I like and that's what we need to. Make there you go. I like there to make that kind of money too. But we do need scientists. We do need. We do need doctors. We do need people that you know these jobs that you see that you know, that people are inventing things and doing all that kind of stuff. You know, and and and, and bringing technology up to date. You know, we have to have our kids learn. That you know, we 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 have other skills besides you know athletes, ath, um, athletes and and things like that. But I'm enjoying your show, bro. You know, I had one on just a while ago, and I'm, I'm I trying know, to. Brother, you, you know, I miss I, that show, and my whole thing is, you need to put that show later in the day so the people like us working folk can can come. <laughs> <laughs> brother, can, yeah, you can clock in. <laughs> you know, uh, like you said, we're archived. You know how we are, bro. We're all of us are archived. I know, bro. And, and, and when you can't get in, and same with me. But you know, like I said, I'm trying to re-educate myself with my last name, the Bird Songs, and I'm finding right. out that they do that. the Bird Songs is a very big name that's, that's been here since the beginning of the, uh, this country, the colonial right. era. You know, and I found out that we got a lot of them in Louisiana, and I'm trying to find out if there's some Perez in there somewhere. You better know it, because you know we might be we might be underlying cousins and don't even know it. You know, we, the cousin birds on Perez. That's right. You never know. Somebody down in Shaniqua or 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 or, or That's right. it might be Alize Alize birds on Perez sitting around here somewhere. <laughs> we don't know. There you go. Let me find out. There you go. <laughs> but you know, I'm let you, you know, I'm enjoying your show, man, as always, and I always shout out to you guys. And I want to also just shout out real quick to our addition to the family, Butterfly, beautiful That's Butterfly right. Radio Show, Beyonce right. is Butterfly. And That's also, right. I don't this, the beautiful Butterfly Show. She, we will be on her show on Wednesday. So if you can make it. Come on over to the beautiful butterfly show because we or she is going to be spotlighting urban souls and and you know and, and a whole lot of things about us That's and what we're doing. So just make sure you come on and stop on by. And when I get in Bianca knows when I get a chance to come by her show, she she you know I tell her too your show a little too early. You know? <laughs> well, you know I'm on the West Coast time. You know eleven o'clock was feasible for catching people. I, I thought at two o'clock in the afternoon on the East Coast. Well, you know, we, we we can do that, you know, and then we had other things that you and I know about the partner shows. We don't want to cut across each other, you know, and that's, right, that's, that's how to right. do respect. So what we um, need to do is I would like for all of us, uh, the Beautiful Butterfly Show, the Quam Squirrel, and Urban Souls to have a show just maybe once a month that we would be a one dynamic duo. Oh, we you can know, do that. I you think, know, about that. I mean, that's a that's good right. concept. You know, that we can all get on one corner. We can just host it all together, bring That's everybody right. together, you know. That's I right. I see Bud Rock there with some ninja faces. Hey, hey, what you peeking at? <laughs> she don't like nobody to shout out her name because she know I shout out all the time. Well, she, right. she got shot my folks because I do the same thing. We're going to call you out. You, you that's up right. this and guess what? And that's all a part of being family. It doesn't matter if you got your own show, I got my own show. We are still family, and as long as we, yes, as long as we run together, we're gonna always be powerful. And that's what I'm talking about. That's what this show is all about. You don't have to be so separated from each other. You don't have to be so indignant towards each other. Everybody have their own walk in life. That's right. That's right, my man. 
And you know, I said, we have big brothers from another mother, but it's all the same thing. That's right, partner. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going yeah. to let you go. I'm going to get in the chat room and hang out with the marshal because I think he need help. <laughs> yeah, he, he do. He do. He do. You know, he, don't, he don't ask for it. He don't ask for it. But, you know, every now and then we got to come on in there and get my hand. That's right. So, so I'm going to go in, go in there with the marshal. I'll, uh, I'll talk to you later, my brother. All right, bro. Tell Julie we said hi. I will do. Peace. All right, partner. Peace. Yes, indeed. It has, we, we've, we've been friends a long time. We've come from several websites, and we've followed each other from several. You know, rest in peace, Carol. She's the one that started our big old family, and it was urban, UrbanDoor.com. And when I tell you that was a beautiful place to be, she ran it like a ship, like a tip-top ship. And a lot of times, you know, we just we, we miss her a lot. She's been she's been away from us for years now, but we, we sometimes we miss her. And, you know, the purpose for having discussions and things like that, we don't we, we try not to forget where we came from, and we most certainly had a beautiful family over there, and it's spilling over onto urban urban do, urban soul as well, and we we can truly appreciate it. Uh, let me get to number six. Here we go. Y'all gonna have to stay stay seated for this one. Number six is this: the Negro must highly resolve to wipe out mass ignorance. The leaders of the race must teach and inspire the masses to become eager and determined to improve mental, mentally, morally, and spiritually, and to meet the basic requirements of good citizenship. We should initiate an intensive literacy campaign in America as well as in Africa. Ignorance, satisfied ignorance, is a milestone about the neck of the race. It is democracy's greatest burden. Social integration is a relationship attained as a result of the civilization of kindred social ideas, interests, and standards. It is a blending process that requires time, understanding, and kindred purposes to achieve. Likes alone and not laws can do it. So she said we must resolve to wipe out mass ignorance. And this is what's happening in our world today. We have become so complacent. We have become so withdrawn with not doing what we are supposed to be doing. We have become so into taking care of each other's, not their best interests. When you see perfect example, Beautiful Butterfly has a show. Urban Souls has a show. Naquam World has a show. Whoever else out there got a show. But let me tell you what people try to do. People try by design to separate you because unity, they feel, is not an option. Now, instead of you bringing family together, people are designed to want to keep you separated, just like back in slavery. They didn't even want you to know how to read because they was too scared. The white folks was too scared that we were going to become someone. So when you when when you when they found out that you can read, what did they do? They either hung you, they punished you severely so that you wouldn't ever want to read another book again, or you learned to keep your mouth shut. But we as a family need to get it together and we need to pull our resources together. Ain't nobody trying to take nothing from you. I'm not trying to take nothing from you. Naquam's not trying to take nothing from me. But Beautiful Butterfly is not trying to take anything from me. We as a family need to pull together. But you're going to always meet people who says, you know what, I'm not going over to Urban Souls because they're they, they doing it real big over there. You know, my, my site ain't gonna, it's not going to be that big, so I'm not going to get in my business and take all my people over there. Oh, no, that's not going to happen. That's the inside of a black man or a black woman. That's the ignorance of what happens. It happens because it's ignorance going on. You don't have the, the thought process to say, you know what, let's pull this together. We can be another I see color. We can be another uh, Facebook. But instead, what you do? Half the people you invite to talk about something serious sitting over there playing Farmville, sitting over there playing Nightclub City, sitting over there playing Petville. Because you know why? Jealousy runs rampant around amongst our race, and I hate to say that, but it's the truth. Jealousy runs rampant among African Americans, and, it, and they want to say it stems back to, to slavery. But what we have to do as African Americans is let that go and become one. 
You, know, you got people who don't even like you and don't know nothing about you. You got people, I got people who can't stand my guts, but they can't tell you what my last name is. I, they got people on, who, who will not stand tall and say, hey, you know what, let me just get to know this brother. Let me get to know what this family is all about. But instead, you're going to hear 99 stories about something that the Perez family is not. You know, and it's a shame that we can't come together and make something beautiful out of something so small that's turning out of something so huge. You know, no, I'm not sitting here trying to plug urban souls because if you come, you come, you don't, you don't. We're going to still rise. But what I'm saying to you is that we need, as a people, to become one. As a people, we need to stop the ignorance. And that way, we can tell our children and your children's friends. We have to stop being afraid. Well, I can't tell your, your uh, friend nothing because your friend's mama going to come up in here acting stupid. Perfect example. This little boy got shot in the chest, 17 years old. He got shot in the chest by a 14-year-old. So he come into the, the, the emergency room and Apparently, he he must have got shot somewhere else, like days or, or maybe a couple of weeks beforehand. But he was coming in because he had chest, uh, he couldn't breathe. Well, come to find out, they had to remove part of his lung. So the, the the people who brought him in were his neighbors. So the doctor goes, well, where's his mother? Where's his father? Oh, no, you don't want her to come in here because she will act a fool. Act a fool for what? What is she going to come here and act a fool before, for what? what? What's the purpose of her coming and act a fool? Okay, we'll make a long story short, family. Oh, yes, she came in and she acted a plum fool. You know, and I'm saying to myself, why are you sitting here showing your, your ignorance like that? Why are you sitting here? The boy is, 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 having, is in pain. The boy is going through some things, and you sitting up here showing your ignorance. You don't even have a reason to come in here acting silly like that. And we're not going to get on. Let me tell you something. If you got a cell phone, Please stay off of it when you conduct in business. How are you going to – let me tell you, some of these little girls walked into my company, and I was standing there at the desk, at the receptionist's desk, and the little girls coming in on the cell phone. Well, I know that they were coming for a job interview because during the summer I always put out job applications for the teenagers and for the college kids. So I'm standing there. They're not knowing who I am. They come in there popping gum. Chewing, talking on the phone. Yeah, girl. Cause I told, well, wait, girl, let me call you back, girl, because I'm in here doing this application, girl. You might as well turn right back around. But what I did was this. I said, you know what? The first rule of thumb that you young ladies need to understand is this. Don't ever come into a company for an application to fill out for a job, and you're sitting there on the telephone laughing and talking to your friends and chewing gum. Rule number one, you t finish your conversation in your car and you tell your friends, I'm going to look for me a job. I'm going to fill out this application. I'll call you right back. Rule number two, you put your phone on silent or you put it on buzz. Regard I don't care if that phone buzzes 15 times during an interview. Do not pick that phone up. Rule number three, spit that gum out before you walk into a building. That's what you need to do. So then again, you have to educate people. Now, I could have said, well, you know what, just let her turn around and go on outside because this is ridiculous. I'm not going to even talk to her. But I sat them down to educate them and say, you know what, you need to do what you, this is what, and, and rule number four, if you're wearing a skirt, let it go past your knees. So when you sit down and it rises to your knees, then you are able to cross your legs without the interviewer seeing your panties. It doesn't make sense that you got on a skirt, mid-thigh, and some four-inch heels. Are you coming to an interview or are you going to a club? We have to resolve to wipe out mass ignorance. Sometimes they just don't know because their mamas didn't teach them. The, the mama's mama didn't teach them. So it's an ongoing issue of ignorance. We have to wipe it out. We have to let it go. And in order for us to wipe it out, out, the one thing we need to do is to tell these children. Sometimes, you see, sometimes you feel like, well, you know what, they got to know that they, they, they know better. They're 18 years old. They're 19 years old. They're 22 years old. You will be surprised at young men and women who don't know any better because they weren't raised to know any better. So, therefore, people like me 
and the Quam and Wolf and people like Jazzy and people like Verna, people like like Moon, people like you, you need to step in and tell these children what's right. Because here's my right hand to God. These are the same children that's going to have to take care of us when we can't take care of ourselves. Now, you might want to <laughs> train them up. Or you're going to be sitting in a soggy diaper at the old folks' home because these are the people who are going to take care of us. And I'm telling you what God loves, and that's the truth. I'm telling you. We got to train them up or we're going to be in big, 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 big trouble. That's right. That's right. Now I'm going to give me a glass of water <laughs> because uh, I'm a little parched here and I'm going to get back with the rules and regulations. I'm going to give you all a little information on who Nanny Burroughs was because it's absolutely an amazing uh, story. That, and I know most of you have heard about it. I know you guys have read the book, you know, because it's it's old. You know, but it doesn't help to bring up things that are positive. You know, it doesn't help to bring up, it does help to bring up things that, you know, sometimes we just forget. You know, and if we hear it again, then maybe, just maybe, you can educate somebody else. You know, just maybe you could tell somebody else about this person. You know, maybe if you educate a friend or a friend's daughter. Or, or or some some kids are, are are teaching themselves these days. You know, you 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 just don't you stop and ask a child, "Where's your mama?" Well, I don't know. I haven't seen her in three days. So sometimes that hard exterior, behind that hard exterior, is a soft heart. And sometimes we need to understand that. I'll be right back.
my family. I got my sisters, my brothers, and me. And if you're just tuning in, you are you are live with Urban Souls Radio, where we try to take time to not just have a good time playing the, the, the music and things of that nature, but also we have a spiritual setting, a spiritual background, and we also have decided to try and educate our people as best we can, you know, to, to try and get to the masses as to what could be some issues that we can learn from, you know, that we, we and I'm sure each and every one of us who are here, who are listening in the chat room or whatnot, we basically have so much in our hands that we can deal with. But what I'm saying is if you just take a time out and you see something that's going on, don't be afraid to say to somebody, look, I think, you you know, maybe you need to do it this way. You know, I, I know that we are living in times of trouble and, 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 and turmoil, and I know there are times where you feel like I'm not going to stop that boy and tell him nothing because I might get shot. You know, that that goes on to that little that little snitch rule, whatever. Then that's a whole nother show. So I'm gonna keep my mouth shut on that one because that's my next show about that snitch rule. How y'all, how we as African Americans, are tearing up our neighborhoods by not cleaning up the trash. But that's another show of another week. So I'm gonna let go of that one. Now I wanted to read a little bit about about who Nanny Nanny uh, Helen was. It says here. Nanny Helen Burroughs was born in Orange, Virginia in 1883 to parents John and Jenny Burroughs. Young Burroughs attended school in Washington, D.C., then moved to Kentucky, where she attended Eichstein, Eckstein Norton University and eventually received an honorary master's degree in 1907. Now, let me just stop right there. In 1907, this black woman got a master's degree, but in 2010... We can't get black folks to get an AA degree. Despite the absence of college degree, Burroughs sought a teaching position in Washington, D.C. As you know, as it still stands today and back then, you had to have a certain teaching degree in order to become a certified teacher. When she did not receive it, she moved to Philadelphia and became an associate editor of the Christian Banner, the Baptist newspaper. Burroughs returned to Washington, D.C., where despite receiving a high rating in the civil service exam, she was refused a position in the public school system. Burroughs took a series of temporary jobs, including office building janitor and bookkeeping for a small manufacturing firm, hoping to eventually become a teacher in Washington, D.C. She then accepted a position in Louisville as secretary of the Foreign Mission Board of the National Baptist Convention. In 1907, Burroughs, supported by the National Baptist Convention, began planning the National Trade and Professional School for Women and Girls in Washington, D.C. The school opened in 1909 with 26-year-old Burroughs as its first president. Burroughs adopted the motto, We Specialize in the Holy Impossible, for the school, which taught courses on high school and junior high school levels and college levels. She led her small faculty in training students through a curriculum that emphasized both vocational and professional skills. Her students were to become self-sufficient, wage earners, and expert homemakers. Unlike most of her contemporaries, Burroughs believed that industrial and classical education were compatible. She also became an early advocate of African-American history, requiring each of her students to pass that course before graduation. Burroughs was a demanding principal. According to observers, she was such a purist that she was physically pained when she encountered grammatical errors made by her students. Nanny Helen Burroughs never married. She devoted her life to the National Trade and Professional School for Women and Girls and remained its principal until her death in 1961. Three years later, the institution she founded was renamed the Nanny Burroughs School. So, you know, people, when you have children, this is a prime source of education for your children, a prime source for them to say, well, look, this is what's going on here. Did you know about this person? You know, how many times is your child, is your child going to write about Martin Luther King Jr.? We need to, as parents, sit back and say, wait a minute. There's something that my child or somebody else's child needs to know. We're going to go to number seven. 
the Negro must stop charging his failures up to his color and to white people's attitude. <laughs> the truth of the matter is that good service and conduct will make senseless race prejudice fade like mist before the rising sun. God never intended that a man's color shall be anything other than a badge of distinction. It is high time that all races were learning that fact. The Negro must first qualify for whatever position he wants. Purpose, initiative, ingenuity, and industry are the keys that all men use to get what they want. The Negro will have to do the same. He must make himself a workman who is too skilled not to be wanted and too dependable not to be on the job. According to promise or plan, he will never become a vital factor in industry until he learns to put into his work the vitalizing force of initiative, skill, and dependability. He has gone, he has, he has gone rights, mad, and duty, dumb. Let's say that again. He has gone rights, mad, and duty, dumb. What she's saying is this. Instead of you sitting around woe and me and complaining about the reason why you don't have this and that and the other is because of the color of your skin, why don't you do what everybody else does or what some of us have done and keep on keeping on and getting more and more and more? Your color is your badge of distinction, no matter how bad things may seem. It's always it's not always the kind of color of your skin that's stopping you from doing something. Again, sometimes you need to look at yourself in the mirror. Well wait a minute, let me just see why I didn't get that job today. Okay, let me take a good look in the mirror. Well maybe it's because you got on a four X shirt when you wear size one X. Maybe it's because you have on some size forty two waist jeans and no belt. Maybe it's because when you bend over they see your plaid boxes. Maybe it's because you walked into that office for an interview with no shoestrings in your brand new $200 Air Jordans. Maybe it's because while you was doing your interview, you sitting there twisting your dreadlocks. Maybe it's because you can't complete a sentence. What do you do? What have you done in the last year? Well, uh, uh, and um. So, um, but then I, I, um, this is what I'm talking about. Sometimes it has nothing to do with the color of your skin, but it has everything to do with how you present yourself as a man, as you present yourself as a woman. It has a lot to do. Presentation is everything. Have you ever saw somebody bring you a plate of food if you had a barbecue or if you had a restaurant and somebody brings you a plate of food and they got, you know, if you go, have you ever noticed when you go to a, 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 a buffet and somebody fixing their food and they got noodles hanging all off the side of the plate? That's not presentable. Have you ever gotten a glass of water and you see a little speck or something floating in it? No, no. Have you ever went to a restaurant and your food was not presented the way you wanted it to be? Somebody, you asked for a steak medium well, well done, and you come in there with a steak and you got blood all at the bottom of it? That's not presentable. That is not presentable. You know, it's how you present yourself to people that will make people say to you that there's a problem. You know, you have to sit down, and I'm not just getting on the brothers. I'm getting on the brothers and the sisters. You have to sit down and say to yourself, what is there wrong with me? And sometimes if you just stop a, a young person, if they come in for an interview and you say to them, I got a, a body long mirror right there. Why don't you take a look at it? And you look at the, well, I, I think I look good. You look good to go to a party. You look good to go to the club. You look good to hang out with your friends. But you don't look good to come in for a job application. You even look good to go to school and fill an application to get your education and go to school. But until you want to get past the what I call the Burger King McDonald's mentality, don't think I'm don't think I'm down to people because I'm not going to flip no burgers. I'm gonna tell you straight up, partners. I'm not going to flip no burgers. I got three degrees. I'm not going to flip no burgers. That's the one thing I will not do. But let me explain to you why I'm not going to flip no burgers. I'm not going to flip no burgers because I spent many years in school to become who I am today. 
my color is my badge of distinction. I spent many of nights trying to get where I am today. So know that I won't have to flip a burger. But if it's your choice not to educate yourself, if it's your choice that you didn't finish school, if it's your choice that you're not going to college, then guess what? You're going to flip some burgers because there's very few jobs that's going to give you high pay like you want, and you don't want to do nothing to get it. How many times have you heard somebody black say, you know what, I want to be a doctor, but shoot, I ain't going to school all them years. That's too many years in school. Shoot, that's 12 years in school. I'm not going to be spending all them years up in school. Okay, so you don't want to be a doctor. What kind of doctor are you planning on being that you can't get educated to be what you want to be? How, how, how long? How, how long do you want to be? You want to go to school for two years? Well, you don't want to be a doctor. You, you actually don't want to be nothing because two years is only going to get you an AA degree. And you can't go nowhere with an AA degree. And don't think them little uh, general studies degrees, they're not going to get you nowhere. Because the first thing an employer is going to say to you, well, what did you study? Well, I did English and history and on math and on, okay, so you got a general studies degree. Well, what, what was your minor? Did you minor in something? Well, no, I was just trying to get out of school, and I didn't really, I thought a degree was a degree. Well, uh, what do you want to be with this general studies degree well i was just thinking um you know y'all got a position like a manager how you gonna be a manager in a company and don't even know what you're doing you know i sit up here and look at these little girls take you know you got to qualify to work for me so now you take a typing test here they go Twenty-five minutes later, they got two, three sentences. But here they, they tapping with their five-inch nails. And you really want me to give you a job? Come on now, come on now. You 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 really truly want to get a job? It, it, it's it's unreal to me. It's unreal to me. You know, you come in here. First of all, you can't type because your nail's too long. Second of all, you come in here and the big old paper on the side of the wall says you must type at least 40 words a minute. You come in here typing two words a minute. Then you can't, you, if, you, if you look down and look up, you, all your words is misspelled. You know, come on now, we got to do better. We have to do better, but again, it's all about us teaching each other's children. Don't come up to me and say, you know what, partner, you know, my daughter came up to me and said, you called her this, this, this. All I'm saying is this, homie, don't say nothing to my child. I don't say nothing to your child. You don't say nothing to my child. You heard me? Well, that's why your child is the way your child is, because of you, partner, because you haven't taught your child common sense. I see you walking around here. You got your old school sagging pants on with your old school Reeboks. Then your wife come out with her old school rollers going to the grocery store. Come on, family. We got to do better. We got to do better. And I'm not just talking down. I'm talking. I'm not talking down about you. I'm trying to lift you up. I'm trying to educate you so that you will understand that just because there's a black man for president, he is not God. Barack Obama is not God. Why did y'all think that he was going to come in here and save you? He's telling you just like anybody else is telling you, I'm trying to help you save yourself. I bet half of I bet half of America don't know that Barack Obama has raised the Pell Grant from twenty to from twenty three to twenty four hundred all the way to fifty five hundred dollars. He's saying to you, Go to school. I'm gonna need you to get your education. I need for you to uplift yourself. So I'm gonna raise this Pell Grant to fifty five hundred dollars. That way, anybody who can go to a community college, can go to a university, can go to a vocational school, and you don't have to worry about loans and qualifying, I'm going to give you $5,500. It ain't going to cost you but about fifteen, sixteen hundred to take a few classes, and you still got a refund check. Go get your books. But let me tell you what we do as people. You get that refund check. 
and you go run on to the mall. I'm going to get me this. Um, they had that Gucci. Come on now, we got to do better. We got to do better. He, he gave it to us. It's in black and white. Y'all can go over there and read it. He done already gave it to us. It's fifty five five thousand five hundred dollars There's no reason for you to be flipping burgers. There's no reason for you to be complaining that you clean toilets. Yeah, sometimes you got to work for what you want. Sometimes you got to work hard for what you want. Yeah, sometimes you're tired. You come home from work, you don't feel like going to no school. But guess what they've done? They've made it even simpler. They got online classes. You could take you some online courses. You could take you one or two classes a, a, a semester, and you can do it. You can do it. Why are you sitting up waiting for, for Barack Obama to save you? You know what happened to Barack Obama? Barack Obama saved himself, and that's why he is president of the United States of America. But they got these little children thinking Barack Obama going to come up and save people. He can't save nobody. You, just like he saved himself, you got to save yourself. And guess what, Miss Retta? I'm proud of you. Big ups to Miss Retta because you know why? No matter how long it takes you, you're going to do it, and you're going to better yourself and better your situation. I don't care how long it takes you, but you got the initiative to do it, which makes you a better person for doing that. And your children and your children's children are going to look at you and say, hey, she did it. I know I can do it. That's the point right there. That's the point. Somebody is doing it. They're not just reading about it. Somebody is really tangible doing it. I can touch her skin and say she's actually doing it. Yeah, you might have some sleepless nights. So what? Who cares? But you can do it. You know, you can do it. Education is free for the most part. You can go online and catch a class. It's free. It's it's free. You know, people tell me all the time, you know what? My child is my child has Mercedes, where are you at? She's still in the chat room. She has her degree in visual communication. She had children at a young age, and I always use her as a reference to young people because this child had children at a young age, and all kind of rumors blasted around uh, Black Planet, all kind of rumors blasted around Facebook, all kind of rumors blasted around uh, uh, MySpace, all kind of rumors blasted around. Uh, she got them children. She, she must not be educated. She must, her daddy must didn't teach her. Her daddy taught her well because my child got a degree in visual communications, and she's under 25 years old and has her own business, her own graphic design business. She's not working for somebody. People are working for her. This is what I'm talking about. If you teach a child that way, they're going to grow up that way. No matter what circumstances you have in your life, this child had triplets and still graduated from college with a master's degree in visual communication. This child graduated from high school at 15 and a half years old when they kept telling her she wasn't going to do it. She did it. She did it with a heart problem. Come on now. Don't tell me what can be done. My child's a living witness of what can be done. Living witness. Sometimes you've got to bring out the living witnesses. You know, of what can be done and who can do it. So no matter how much, how much of the, the gossip that was running around town about Mercedes having triplets and that this, 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 guess what? All she can say right now is I showed you. Now what? Now let me move on. <laughs> it says here, the Negro, the, the, the Negro must overcome his bad habits. Did I say that one, you guys? He must must make a brand new reputation for himself in the world of labor. His bad habits are absenteeism, funerals to attend, <laughs> funerals to attend, or a little business to look after. The Negro runs an off and on business. He also has a bad reputation for conduct on the job, such as petty quarreling with other help. In Incessant loud talking about nothing, loafing, carelessness due to lack of job pride, insolence, gum chewing, and too often liquor drinking. Just plain bad habits. Now, I don't, even know, I don't want y'all to go run to y'all friends and say, you know what, Tan said, we was just no good, and we didn't do this, 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 and I was really upset about it. I'm just reading from a book that's uh, 
very old. So until y'all run, y'all go run, tell anybody you want to tell, but the truth is the light. The truth is the light, and y'all know it's true. I just got through saying it. The cleaning people was the loudest ones in the whole place. Sometimes when I walk in my company, I say to myself, wait a minute, what is that noise? What is that cackling? So I go in there to the break room, all the cleaning people. What are y'all doing? Oh, we're just taking a break. All right, you can take a break, but why you got to be so loud? All right, because she had said, oh, um, no. This is a business. This is a company. This is a corporation. You're going to need to do what you got to do. You're going to need to do what you was hired to do. It's not a problem with you talking and laughing, but you don't, people down the street don't need to hear what you're talking about. You, you don't need to call. Y'all know, how, y'all know how them brothers be doing. Uh, I got to call in because my cousin died. All right. The next month, I got to call in because my cousin, my other cousin, suddenly died. Oh, all right. So you know what I started doing? You see, when there's too many funerals to attend, I started asking them, you're going to need to bring me the funeral program. You know, that stops it dead in its tracks. I said, well, you know what? Bring me the program. We'd like to talk about it in the next meeting. It stopped it dead in its tracks. Dead in its tracks. Because enough is enough. Sometimes you got to call people out. Sometimes you got to call them out. And say, you know what, I'm going to need to see the, the obituary so we can all pray for your cousin. You know, and then another one, oh, because I can't come, I'm late today because my cousin um stole my car. And uh, then I, I, I had to figure out a way to get to work. But I'm going to be there. Now, here's the thing. You done said all that to me on the phone, but yet and still the person who you was riding with last night at the club came into work on time. So then they get to talk, oh, yeah, me and Juju, we was at the club last night. Where he at? Oh, he just called in and said somebody stole his car. We got to do better. Stop all the stop with all the excuses. Stop with all the excuses. If a man is gonna be a man, you gotta act like a man. Cut back all them excuses. Excuses is nothing but workshop for the devil. You got an excuse for everything. An excuse for why you late. An excuse for why you can't come to work. But then when you get fired or laid off, then you want to cry about it. Oh, I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills. Well, if you stop complaining about the job that you have and you come to work on time and you do what you're supposed to do, then you wouldn't have any issues. All that complaining is useless. All that blaming white people for stuff is useless. Because guess what? While you complain about what the white people got not doing and doing, you, they got theirs. No matter how many times you said, I wonder how George and Mary and, and Mary and the little children, I wonder how they got on vacation, how they get to take a vacation every year. They work here too, and they get to take a vacation. Well, let me point it out to you, partner. The reason why they get to take a vacation once a year is because they don't spend their money on McDonald's every single solitary day. If you notice, George has a bologna and cheese sandwich for lunch every single day. If you notice, he brings his own drinks. He don't spend his money in the snack machines. He don't spend his money running around corner to the chicken joint. He don't spend his money getting food every single day. If you calculate how much money you spend on fast food, you would be surprised that it would be well over $200 a month that you could be putting back into saving for a vacation, okay? Little Judy and little Jody don't have $300 pairs of shoes. Have you ever noticed that we as color people, black folks will go to spend some money on those children's shoes and know they're going to have scuffs and drag and meat all off the shoe the second day of class? You got little Jody, Jody got her little pay less shoes because guess what? Little Jody wants to go to Disney World. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. I have sat and watched people sit inside of the foot locker and go over to the little children's section and say to the, you know, do you have this in a size two? And I go over there and I look over and I look at the price. Oh, she about to spend seventy nine ninety nine on this baby crawling? Yes, because um, my baby got to have the best. What does the best mean to, to a child that's going to, the shoes is going to be too small in a month. What difference 
do and make. Sometimes, watch and see what I'm saying to you, family. Why don't you pack your lunch for a month and take that money that you was going to go to McDonald's and that money that you was going to go spend, take that money and put it inside of a jar. I'm telling you, if you go, now let's just say this here. Okay, let's do this. And we're going to come back and see how much money we save. If you spending $5 on breakfast, $5 on lunch, and 5 $10 on dinner, you take that $5, put it in a cookie jar. At the end of the month, you count that money. And you tell me how much money you save by bringing you a sandwich and a bag of chips to work, by bringing you a, some cereal to work. Eat breakfast before you leave. Wake up early enough to eat before you leave. Watch and see how much money you're going to save. Now let me move forward. He must improve his conduct in public places. Did I have that? Did I say that one? Well, if I did, I'm going to say it again. Take it as a whole, he is entirely too loud and too ill-mannered. There's a much talk about wiping out racial segregation, also much talk about achieving integration. Segregation is a physical arrangement by which people are separated in various services. It is definitely up to the Negro to wipe out the apparent justification or excuse for segregation. The only effective way to do it is to clean up and clean, keep clean. By practice, cleanliness will become a habit, and habit becomes a character. That's all i got to say about that one. Number 10, the Negro must learn how to operate business for people, not Negro people only. To do business, he will have to remove all typical earmarks, business principles, measure up to accept standards, and meet stimulating competition graciously. In fact, he must learn to welcome competition. Here we go. Sometimes, and I use own life experiences as a reference. Have you ever, you, now you know we have uh, oh, about 15, 20 wig shops in the city. I know wherever y'all live, y'all got wig shops and hair extension places and nail shops pretty much on every corner. Because you know what? Them Koreans and them Filipinos and them Japanese people cannot survive without our help. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm getting at? While you getting your nails done and you getting your fake nails done and you getting your weaves done by Koreans, you know who said it. Lauren Hill said it. Fake nails done by Koreans come again. Sometimes you got to look at your surroundings. While you put money in their pocket for little Kung Kwang Shui to go to private school, your child fighting bullets at the corner school. While you go and get your hair pieces done by little Nguyen Tak Chu, your child trying to figure out how they going to have lunch. This is what I'm talking about. But if we pool our money together, then guess what? We pool it together and we can build our own. Y'all ever see that movie? I can't think of the name of that movie, but all the black people were in the white people positions and all the white people were like, you know, mechanics and, 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 and working in the fast food joints and all this stuff. I thought that was the best movie ever. I just cannot think of the name of it. You know, but if you pool your resources together, then you have a much powerful people. This is my point. You got to pool it together. You got to stop making it so hood. Have you ever went into one of them shops where they sell the little T-shirts and stuff, and you got the incense going, you got the loud music playing, and you got the, you know, you stand there trying to get some help, and people are like, well, what? Um, I'm looking for a size large. But it's over there somewhere, you know, in that corner. Don't you see the sign say large? All right. You get your little keys and you walk on out. Then you go to a little Korean store. They all run up to meet you. Hello, how are you? Hello, 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 five dollar, five dollar. Hello, how are you? Five dollar, five dollar. There's two problems with that. First problem is you had to leave the black store because you didn't get no help. You got attitude and issues. The second problem, you got to go to the Koreans and give them their money and put a little feng shui into private school. So you stuck between a rock and a hard place. Therefore, we must learn how to operate business for people and not run it for yourself. Don't be sitting up there with your homeboy sitting up there eating french fries and fried chicken all in front of customers. A business is just that, family, a business. 
Number 11, the average so-called educated Negro will have to come down out of the air. Y'all better listen to this one. He is too inflated over nothing. He needs an experience similar to the one that Ezekiel had. Now, you're going to need to read your Bible for this one. It's Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 14 through 19, and he must do what Ezekiel did. Otherwise, through indifference, as to the plight of the the masses, the Negro who thinks that he has escaped will lose his own soul. It will do all leaders good to read Hebrew 13 and 3 and the first 37 chapters of Ezekiel. A race transformation itself through its own leaders and its sensible common people. A race rises on its own wings or is held down by its own weight. True leaders are never things apart from the people. They are the masses. They simply got to the front ahead of them. Their only business at the front is to inspire to, to inspire the masses by hard work and noble example and challenge them to come on. Okay? Show the people the light, and they will find the way. They must rise. They, they, there must arise within the Negro race a leadership that is not out hunting bargains for itself. A noble example was found in the men and women of the Negro race, who in the early days laid down their lives for the people. Their invaluable contributions have not been appraised by the latter-day leaders. In many cases, their names would never be recorded among the unsung heroes of the world, but for the fact that white friends have written them down. Come on now. Y'all need to stop pretending like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Y'all know how it go. You get a little position, a little power in position. What you do? You walk around with your head stuck up so far up in the sky that you smelling that you smelling the clouds. No, <laughs> don't tell me. Don't tell me. Yeah, you got so you got so much going on that you think you all in a bag of chips and a bowl of grits. You can't tell your people how to get where you going. Then you keep, then you, not, you done made it. You done made it. But this is what you do. This is what the highfalutin people do. I'm not including myself because I tell people how to make it. This is what you do. You saw your head so far up in the air. All you want to do, can you tell me how you got the position where you, well, I, 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 I went to school, and you keep on walking. Or your head so far up in high, it's like you snorting clouds. Here you go. You, you don't want to, you looking down on people. You know, you looking down on people. You 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 so big and mighty that you can't tell nobody how to do things. You can't train your people up. You can't offer a little assistance. You know, you done made all this money. You don't even have a fund for somebody else to get what they need. You you don't even. It's it's, it's a shame. I've seen it for myself. Perfect example is this doctor. Y'all know I always talk about the doctors. You know, but. It's this doctor. She black. She got dreadlocks. I have never in my life seen such a stuck-up sister. It is absolutely ridiculous how disgusting she is. She only talked to the white people. In other words, I've had, I have my education, so screw y'all. Everybody that helped me get to the top, screw y'all. I am a children's physician. They screw y'all. I don't need to talk to y'all now, but let me tell you something. The first time she needs something, and she want to go, how's everybody doing? Don't talk to me now, sister. This is the problem. When you get a, a powerful position, when you've gotten where you feel like you need to be, oh, then you want to cut off your people. Oh, you don't want to be bothered with them. But guess what? Guess what? Everything that goes up must do what? Bam, come down. And when you come down, those are the ones that come down hard. Those are the ones that sit there with their heads all high up in the air, talking down on people, talking about how people don't do this, this, this. But yet and still, you made it. You made it. And you don't have the common sense. You've lost all your 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 culture because you made it. You've lost it all. You know, I, I sit there and, I, and y'all y'all should just sit and read Twitter. You know them little girls, uh, Ron, Ron, Reverend Ron and his children? They've lost all their culture. They've lost it all. Because guess what? Those children didn't make it on their own. They made it because of the name that their daddy has. Them poor children don't have a clue that if it wasn't for Rev Ron and their uncle, they would be nothing. But because they know they're so far up in the crowd because they got old money now, they'll never have to do anything for themselves again. Their mentality is different. 
they think differently. And the one thing they don't understand is everything that goes up has got to come down. You got to bring up your children the way you want them to go. You got to keep your head out the clouds because guess what? God don't sleep. God don't sleep. Now, I know y'all going to say, oh, Lord, he go to preaching. I'm just letting you know God don't sleep. And he watches what you do. Or he can bless you with all kind of stuff. But if you don't help others and help yourself, or he can take it right back. Trust me. Trust me. I have seen it happen. I've seen people have a whole lot of stuff living in big old gigantic mansions. And it's all gone. God will put you right back at the bottom and let you have to climb your way up. And when you have to start all over again, you know, it gives you integrity. It gives you a different base on living. It gives you a different thing on life because what it does is this. Let me tell you, Hurricane Katrina slapped everything we owned, took everything we had, took everything. We couldn't even get no money out the bank because as far as the rest of the world was concerned, that little bank of Louisiana did not exist. I'm going to tell you something. It didn't exist. We, didn't, we, we were too stupid not to have a bank that was a, a world bank, like Bank of America, Chase Bank. So we had all our money pulled into the Bank of Louisiana. And let me tell you, when Hurricane Katrina hit, they didn't know who we were. I don't know who you are. I don't know who you are, but your ATM card don't work here. You're talking about somebody had to borrow money for the, next, for the next year from 2005 to 2006. But you know what it did? It made us humble. It changed our way of thinking. It changed the way we do things. It changed how we treated people. It changed how we looked at life. It changed us for the better. So everything that goes up, oh, yes, sir, it got to come down. Oh, it got to come down. Trust me, it do. And I'm not just speaking to you from somebody else's eyesight. I'm speaking to you from mine. It says here, Lord, God of hosts, be with us yet. The Negro of today does not realize that, but for these exhibits, exhibit A's, that certainly show the innate possibilities of members of their own race. White people would not have been moved to make such princely investments in lives and money as they have made for the establishment of schools and for the ongoing of the race. Mm -hmm. That says it right there. And last but not least, the Negro must stop forgetting his friends. You have to remember. In the book of Deuteronomy, 24 and 18 says, Deuteronomy rings the, it rings the big bell of gratitude. Why? Because an ingrate is an abomination in the sight of God. God is constantly telling us that I, the Lord thy God, delivered you through human instrumentalities. The American Negro has had and still has friends in the North and in the South. These friends not only pray, speak, write, influence others, but make unbelievable, unpublished sacrifices, sacrifices and contributions for the advancement of the race, for their brothers in bonds. The noblest thing that the Negro can do is to so live and labor that these benefactors will not have given in vain. The Negro must make his heart warm with gratitude, his lips sweet with thanks, and his heart and mind resolute with purpose to justify the sacrifices and stand on his feet and go forward. God is no respecter of persons. In every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is. Sure to win out. It says get to work. That's the answer to everything that hurts us. We talk too much about nothing instead of redeeming the time by working. Perfect. The black folks got to stop forgetting your friends. Just like I kept on saying, you get up there and you forget where you came from. Forget where you came from. And I see it everywhere. I see it on Facebook. I see it on, on on Black Planet. I even see it on Urban Souls. You you done forgot where you came from. You know, I be reading them blasts of people, yes, because I bought a 2020 so and thus and so. And I have a, a 2012 edition already. And I have a 75-inch screen 
hanging on my front. And then they have all these sayings and stuff like they somebody. You done forgot where you came from. You done forgot that you used to live in a shack. You forgot that you used to eat peanut butter and jelly like the next person. Now you just want to hang around people who like, quote, unquote, like you. But don't know you used to be gutter and dirty just like the next person. Don't forget where you came from, buddies. Don't forget where God brought you from. Because guess what? Where God brought you from, he could take you right back to it and make you remember. You don't ever want to walk a step backwards in the shoes that you was walking in before because you done forgot where you came from. We are so big with forgetting where we have come from as a people. As black folks, we done forgot where we came from, but we so big to tell somebody else or what they should and should not be doing. But you done just forgot your whole history. I know people right now don't even speak to their cousins and stuff. Oh, no, because y'all just, you know, too, y'all too disgusting, including my family. I'm going to get on some of my family members, too. I got some family members that show forgot where they came from. We don't speak to this day. Because they think that they better than everybody else. I got a cousin right now that swear to God she's not black. She speaks French. What? Why your mom and daddy didn't tell you you was black? Then she got the nerve to have all white people on her friends list. I didn't even save her as a friend because I was embarrassed. She got all white people on her friends list and she black as the ace of spades talking about because I'm not black. I'm from Sudan. You better sit down somewhere. You right there from, from Los Angeles, California. You need to sit down somewhere with that foolishness. And your mom and your grandma and your daddy and all them, they, they sitting up there just co-signing it. Yep, yep. Why y'all didn't tell that child she was born at the children's hospital right over there in the hood in Los Angeles, California? Just because she went to Paris don't make her for, uh, French. Just because she was taught French don't make her a French person. Come on now. Come on now, let's just get real. Let's just get real. It don't make no sense. And I'm saying, how you, that girl know she, you got your hair, yeah, your hair's flat ironed. Yeah, it's straight. And when you turn your neck, it's swayed like the white people hair. Yeah, do that. But you're black. But somebody forgot to tell her that. So we got to take it back to our roots, and we got to let people know just because you look a certain way, just because you a certain color, just because your color of your skin is a little bit lighter than mine or my skin is a little bit lighter than yours, it don't make you no more black or, or, or white than I am. You are still an African American. It's just that the color of your skin is just a little bit lighter. Don't think that you should have some kind of privilege because your skin is lighter. Don't think that you should have some kind of privilege because you speak a certain way. Don't don't think that you have more privileges because you have light eyes. It don't make sense. It don't make sense. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. You know, and we have to understand that these are the things that have to change. And if they don't change for the better, guess what's going to happen? We are going to fall apart as a nation of people. We are going to fall flat on our faces. You got to stop teaching your children. You know what? So what you slept with somebody who was Spanish? So what you slept with somebody who was white? I have heard this so many times. Well, you know, I'm, I'm going to sleep with somebody white because my children, I want my children to have good hair. What? What you mean you want your children to have good hair? What's good hair? I have heard it. I've heard people saying, you know what, because I'm a macho and I'm, I'm a macho and be sleep with Alejandro because, you know, I want them to have that black curly hair. All right, so you're going to sleep with a Mexican that he, he can't speak a, a lick of English because you want your child to look a certain way. Let's just try to get this. Just let's just try to. That, this is what I'm talking about when I say education. You got to educate your people. That's just the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. How, why would you sleep with a particular race of people just because you want your children to look a certain way? I have heard people say, you know what? Because my kids is blazing. All right, they still black. It don't make no never mind what part you decide to split them with. They still black in the sight of the world. And you're going to need to stop making your children feel like they're better than everybody else because they live in a certain part of the world, because they're in a certain part of the country, because they speak a certain language. Your child is still black. So you want what you want to do is this. 
You're going to want to teach your children that you're a black person in America. You're a black person in the part of the world you're living in. But you're going to need to do better than the next person. Because no matter how you raise your children, so what your children wasn't around all different races or whatever, so what? Still teach your children their race. Teach your children that no matter how straight their hair is, no matter how much, how light their eyes are, let me tell you what I taught my child. I taught my child, it don't matter that your eyes are green and that your hair is black and curly. You are still going to suffer some of the same things that all African Americans suffer. This is what I taught my child. No matter how beautiful people say you got the prettiest green eyes in the world, it doesn't matter. I didn't teach my child. I didn't raise my child up to be so stuck on herself. She's never been a child that's been stuck on herself. That's because you got to teach your children values. you got to teach them that no matter what you look like on the outside, it was on the inside that really, really matters. I don't care if you look like an Om Chukaluk from Zimbabwe. You can walk around here with a big old bone stuck through your nose. You can walk around here with them big old holes in your ears. You can walk around here with that thing to make your neck five feet long. You can do all that. But the content of your character is going to reflect on who you are as a person, and you need to always remember that. The content of your character is going to count more than any hair weave, any amount of money. I don't care if you're driving a Mercedes. I don't care if you're driving a Lexus. I don't care if you got a driver. I don't care if you got a housekeeper. I don't care if you got the cleaning lady. I don't care if you got a nanny. It don't matter who you got. The content of your character is going to shine through and through and through and through. It don't matter. People are going to see you for exactly who you are. They're going to see you for who you are as a person. So we need to get together as a people and make sure that we are teaching our children the proper way. And if you got nieces and nephews, make sure that they're having the proper education. And if you have cousins and, 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 and my next-door neighbor, make sure they are being taught the proper way. Let them know that you are better than what people are saying you are. Say something positive to that child. Stop always bringing that child down. Stop making that child feel like they're not nothing. So what? A child made a mistake. It don't mean that you got to crucify them forever. It doesn't mean that they're going to always be horrible people. It doesn't always mean that they're going to always suffer. You let them know you are a child of the king, not just from African kings and queens, but you are a child of the most high, and that's all that matters. We got one minute left. I thank each and every one of you for stopping by, and we always need to get together, you guys, and make sure that we get our family. A family that prays together stays together. I'll see you all tomorrow. We wish you nothing but love, peace, and urban soul.